Real quick fix up. <laughs> Love you guys. How are you doing? Look at we got Can't a special guest. Zoe. Look at look at look at my special. I miss you. <laughs> I miss my brother and my niece. That's my niece, y'all. <laughs> Zoe Moon. But um, no, we're coming with you with a great, great show. Unfortunately, we are still evacuated. Uh prayers to North Carolina. We have been hit very hard. Honestly, it's yeah. so sad to look around and see the, our neighborhoods, our streets. Um, for example, my uh, the job that I just transferred from actually, you know, not too long ago is, you know, gone. And like, you have to think about stuff like that. We take for granted just every day. So I just want to, you know, put a lot of prayer and, and just energy, positive energy towards, you know, all of North Carolina that has been devastated from this Hurricane Florence. Um, Marquise is, um, Key is, is somebody that is all the way in Georgia. And, you know, he can explain his own uh, experience, Listen. but um, it's crazy. Living out a cute little duffel bag. <laughs> Don't get it twisted. It's still cute. Um, living out a cute duffel, duffel bag. Um, all the roads to Jacksonville, North Carolina are under construction or under the water. They, it's all kind of stuff. They're turning us away. Um, we've reached out to Red Cross, all these people to let us know what's going on. It is still not too safe to travel back, guys. So if you have plans to doing it, it's a lot of places without electricity. Um, it's a lot of places still without water. So if you're planning on going back and you are okay. Okay, because um, it's just not looking too cute right now. But I'm blessed. I'm in good spirits. Y'all see, I had to put on lavish for y'all. Give y'all a cute judge because Mr. Corday is online. The show must keep going, but we will send our love and our prayers to all our family and friends in North Carolina. We are still out here. We still surviving. Make sure y'all loving on each other. If you see somebody in need of water or, or something and you got to give it, Give it. It's not that hard, y'all. It's a simple thing. It's not simple. That hard. Yes, we have to come together, not just in times of, of travesty or anything like that, like or tragedy or anything. So we need to make sure that we're out here and um, just being human beings to one another, you know, and, and treating everyone with love. You know, that's what it's about, love. Um, so we got a great, great, great show to you for you today. Um, we are... You, as you know, we are sponsored by Dig the Kicks, um, AD from Love and Hip Hop Hollywood. I got um, her, you know, their merchandise on right now. Um, this shirt is a little T-shirt. It's cute. Um, it's about, um, it's a long T. So it's really cute. They got so many things. And we also got a promo code for you guys that will you say 15% off if you buy, uh, if you go to their website, Dig the Kicks dtk.com and type in uh, Royal for the promo code. You get 15% off. So make sure y'all go do that. Um, shout out to Dick the Kicks. Shout out to Swag Nation Magazine. Uh, we have teamed and collabed with Swag Nation Magazine, the number one independent artist magazine in the okay. nation. Um, we are on their website. You go to swagnationmagazine.com. There's a Tuesday tab. Make sure you go click that and watch all our latest videos. Um, you can get all our latest tea from there. Um, but today, what we've all been waiting for, Corday. 
Now, Lord let me Lord. tell you something. We done had the whole cast here. and There's no shade to the cast, but he is the most requested, the most inquired, the most wanted cast member. The most talked out. about. Yeah. The most talked about. And I don't understand what is the T. But that's why I said this is the perfect time because, like you stated, everybody on the show has had a little something <laughs> cute to say about Mr. Corday. I personally need to know myself as a fan of both of these shows, The Royal Couch and G Status. Hello, big fan. Um, but <laughs> I'm gonna need to know as a viewer, as a fan, what is going on, bro? You gotta dig in that head because it's it gotta be some underlining things going on. It's a lot of things going on. And um, as you guys know, watching our previous uh, episodes, you know, I'm a fan of Corday. You know, I'm Team Corday, have been since mm -hmm. the beginning. Um, mm -hmm. And I, I I see a lot of, not my, say myself, but just a lot of some tendencies that I may have. And when, you know, we go out with my friends and stuff like that, like, you know, I, I act kind of sort of the same way almost. Um, so I kind of relate with him a lot. And I kind of understand, but this past episode, maybe there was a lot going on, um, and I'm really excited to see what he got to say. I think he fed up. I don't know. And I so what, 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 he what gets was your to take on this episode? Say. Huh? What was, your, what was your take on this episode? To be honest, I want to go back to Tramel's episode, which, which shows that there is a lot of stuff going on. Um, this episode really shows that they do need to have a discussion. There is some conversation that needs to be had. Um, you've seen with the, um, Zavar tried to have that happen. Um, and it's a cut scene, so we'll come back to it on the next um, episode. But I think what the, the direction they're going in right now, shout out to Ja, it, this needs to happen. Because episode to episode, there's a little bit of this and a little bit of that, but they do not never put that hammer to that nail. You know what I'm saying? And I think right, all right. of them have great, big, huge, passionate, type of personality. So it's going to clash. But when are we as, you know, adults going to sit down and talk about it and just squash it? Now, this episode, this episode, I feel like was very detailed. Um, mm -hmm. I, as watching as a viewer, as a fan, you know, I'm watching it and I'm looking at it like, okay, well, it's explaining a lot. And I like how they did the, 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 um, the flashback to where it was like, okay, um, you know, if, in case you don't know what's going on back in episode three, because you have to remember back in episode from one to five, it was every two weeks. So mm -hmm. this was a long time ago right now. So you may have been, you know, not being able to remember what exactly the argument was to begin with, whatever the case may be between Milan and uh, Sherrod. But I feel like this, 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 episode allowed me to realize what was going on and kind of where the where the shade kept coming from as far as Corday was coming yeah. from you know what exactly. I'm saying and 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 he kind of explained and I I, I kind of get where he was coming from because it, to I mean, me yeah. it was like I don't understand the fakeness that's going around because you guys are trying to make me be happy with somebody when they no, talking about you but on top of it, what he said was very valid. He said, I'm antisocial. I don't be bothered. So if I ain't got nothing for you, I don't got nothing for you. What's wrong with that? If you don't want to be bothered, you don't want to be bothered. Leave the boy alone. But, you know, we are on a show. And and hey. you have to – and it's not that you have to like somebody. But, you know, interacting is one another thing. And, you know, as far as Sherrod's event in the beginning when he went to the hip-hop class, I thought that was a dope event. You know, right. it, it was something to bring somebody together. It was it was an activity where you were having fun. It wasn't really so much if you can dance or you can't dance, but just to come and, and, and do an activity with, you know, your people's whatever. And I, I can see them feeling a type of way of him not participating. But at the same yeah. time... Um, Once you get grown, honey, if somebody don't want to do something, they don't want to do it. If he, you don't want to do it, you don't want to do it. Exactly. I came to support and I'm here. He could have not came at all. Like, let's be real. Like, you grown. You don't have to. Yes, it's a show. But here's my support. I'm here to show my face. I'm going to give you my critiques and my opinions. You asked me to come. You already know how I am. Like, what's the problem? I feel Corday. I'm glad this episode came out. I'm glad that y'all were having this interview because it's going to close a lot of doors and open up some more probably. But I yes. hope it closed the door on, oh, Car Corday is a bad person. He's this, that, and Because I particularly don't see it right now. Well, I, I, you I know, and I, I want to address that with him. Because mm -hmm. I do see the whole villain card being played here. Um, 
I, I really, really, really feel like, you know, um, he's being portrayed as the villain, um, which every there, there needs to be a bad guy in every show, whatever the case may be, which is okay. But I just feel like there's other people in the cast that may be able to take that role better than what, you know, he's doing or whatever the case may be, because he may be shady. He may be bougie and all that, but that's, 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 that's nothing typical. You know, that's nothing serious, whatever the case may be, but you have, you know, and no shade to a king because you know, I hate to be biased, but you know, you have a king that's out here really like causing drama and stirring pots and stuff like that. So like, I just don't understand where the villainous is coming from and why doesn't people now, I do want Corday to open up a little bit more and more participate because as a fan, I want to be able to, I want to be him. I want to see him as a likable person. Like I want to be like, okay, he's this and he's that. But I have to also understand that everybody's not who I want them to be. And as a fan, I want you to be regular and be yourself. You know what I mean? Because I am a fan of Corday and have been since the beginning. You know, I don't really condone a lot of the stuff that he was doing this episode but at the same time speak your mind and i can't i can't be and mad yeah, at that I, just, I really feel like corday is one of the people who's like just leave me alone i'm here just leave me alone i'm okay you know what i'm saying like i don't i'm on the show i don't really need to be bothered with all that stuff because i don't get into it i don't think he mean no harm or just mm, you can't sit here hun it's okay though i'm still cool with you you know, well, I'm excited. To, I'm I, and I do. I'm excited to do this interview because I want to get to. I want to. I, I want to have this interview in a sense of. You know, it's going to be very professional, very what we do. But at the same time, I want to come to him as a fan perspective because I know a lot mm -hmm. of our viewers want to know exactly what's going on in his mind. And I want him to be open enough. You know, um, usually we don't have a problem with making people uncomfortable. So, you know, I hope we don't have that problem this time. But I really want us to op him to open up just to really get in his mind and what was he feeling and why does he feel the things that he feels? Because, um I'm really intrigued on his character and who he is and what he's doing. Really so, do. and make sure we get all into this music too because it's, that album though, that album Corday. Y'all can say what y'all want to say about him, but that boy Blows, he got some good songs. He got some jammies. He's talented. Oh yes, he does got some great songs. He does got some great songs. Um, we just played um, Mood, I believe that was, um, and it, he he's he's. He's, I've listened to a lot of his stuff and he's actually really, really, really good. I, I, I he got some know, dope mellow. I, I definitely Fair. do. Um, but um, I see that he is ready. Um, he wants to let's get him on here. Um, we got Corday coming on next. Um, Corday. Corday, make sure that uh, your phone is landscaping. You are on your phone uh, so that we can make sure that you, we add you on smoothly. Um, again, guys, we got Corday coming on. Well, bring back Key in just a bit uh, to see his standpoint on the interview and what um, any more questions he may have. But look out for Key. He will be in the comments. Um, so make sure y'all are liking, commenting, and sharing this live. And if you don't like what you hear or see, make sure you put a man face, but make sure you're doing something. Okay. So, uh, Key, I'll talk see to you later. Me. Love you. Love you, too. See y'all in a bit. Okay, so we're gonna try to see here we can get Corday on the line. Corday, if you want because I see you here, but I'm gonna need Corday, I'm gonna need you to exit out and make sure you come into the live landscape. Your phone has to be sideways, guys. Make sure King Kane, shout out to King Kane, shout out to Ja, shout out to uh Tremel. Shout out to the whole G status uh, cast. Um, I really, this is a really, really great uh, season, and I'm excited to see what's up and coming. Corday, I don't see you. Um, Corday, I need you to make sure that your phone is landscape. waiting on Corday to come in to chime in. Okay, guys, sorry. Corday had called me. <laughs> Corday called me at the wrong, in the wrong uh, platform. So we're going to try to get Corday on here now. There he goes. 
We're adding Corday. And I'm excited for this, guys. Let's go. What's going on, Corday? Hi, can y'all see me? Yes, we can see you. We can see you. Okay. How are you? I'm good. How are y'all? We are great, great. Let me tell you something. Uh, my viewers have been asking about you when I tell you you are the most talked about, most requested cast member out. And that's no shade to nobody else because we love everybody. But, yes, you are the one that they want to talk to. Look, <laughs> hopefully <laughs> that's not too bad of a thing. No, it's not a bad thing. Um, I'm personally a fan of yours, so uh, it's going to be a good thing on my on my end. But um, before we get started, let everyone know your social media and where they can find you and also your music. Okay, so everything you can find me, um, Corday Sings, that's C-O-R-D-A-E, Sings. Um, and on Facebook, it's I Corday still, I think, um, which is I C O R D A E just in case you're trying to find this video and you want to post it or share it. Um, everybody who's in here for me, share, 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 share. Um, and most importantly, you can find all of my music online. Um, it's on iTunes, Spotify, Tidal, Amazon, and Google Play. And just type in Corday, C-O-R-D-A-E, Mood, M-O-O-D. Mind you, before we get started, I do want to say that you're uh... – your mood EP is really, really dope. Like, thank you. There's a lot of songs on there that I relate to, and not only do I relate to, but it brings me back to like that old school R and B, which I really do appreciate. That's awesome. That's awesome. I never heard that that um, the R and B before, so that's that's great. Uh, considering, yeah, like I, I I I really I really thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, so before we get started with. G status and all of that. We like to let our viewers know who you are in depth and stuff. So let's go back in, you know, and let's go to where um, you were like, okay, I can sing, I can do this. What was that mindset? And when was that era of you was like, okay, I want to be somebody more than just Cordette? <laughs> Um, I think that I've always known I wanted to perform. Um, I didn't know if it was in singing. I didn't know if it was in dancing. I didn't know what it was, but I knew that I okay. always wanted to perform. Um, my older sister, she sings, and her name's Shatani. And um, I think that she kind of took center focus as far as, like, the singer out of all um, of my siblings. It's five of us, and I'm the middle. Um, I think she kind of took like the center focus. So I kind of, I was a little bit shy, but not like super, super shy, but I was a little bit shy. And because she has like such a naturally like beautiful voice, like a universal, like beautiful voice. Um, right. I think that she more so was the, um, counted as the singer of the family. So I kind of had to fall back. Um, so I really didn't embrace it until I moved and I went to, well, no, no, my last year of high school, um, I did this event and it was called Indian, <laughs> Indian Land Idol. And, um, Can we hear you? Oh, okay. I heard some static or something. I'm sorry. Um, and I didn't know, I don't think my, my mom, um, or people who knew me and supported me knew that I was actually going to sing. They just thought I was going to be dancing. And I actually sang um, this Amarion song. And I ended up winning first place, um, Indian Land Idol. I know that's right. Um, and from there, it was just kind of like I felt the confidence that I needed. Um, and my sister ended up starting to really embrace me um, doing music. And... It's kind of been a long journey since then. Um, yeah. That's, that's dope. Now, we're definitely glad that you decided to take this journey because I feel like you have a, a lot of um, stories to tell. And, you know, it's very relatable to what we go through, especially as a community. Um, you are from North Carolina, right? Yeah, Charlotte, North Carolina. So did you start, did you, did 
is your fan base, would you say your fan base, because you're in Atlanta now, so is your fan base more so in North Carolina or is it more so in Atlanta? It's crazy because honestly, when I um, when I was in Charlotte, I was doing a lot of shows. Like when I dropped my very first EP called um, Lover's Room, um, it was like my first professional project. And I just did so much. Like I was performing like at least three or four times a week um, doing fashion week and I was just doing anything I could get my hands on. And um, someone told me, if you can't win over your home, then you know, you don't have a chance really. Um, and I took it really, really personal. And so my last year in Charlotte, um, I put out, you know, my EP with the lead single um, called There You Go. Um, you can listen to it on SoundCloud. And it was my very first like professionally recorded song and um it did so well like um i woke up to like a thousand like listens and mind you no one really knew like i was like pursuing music this hard and like i didn't have right, right. like a big following or anything so i was just like from there i was just like oh my god this is you know what i'm gonna do i i'm in for the long run and um later that year i was nominated for a north carolina music award um, for best new artist and I won it um, against like Fantasia's brother and some other people that was in a category that are like national wow. it just and it just um, it just goes to show that like if you work hard and you're really passionate about something you can definitely achieve whatever so winning over Charlotte was um, really big for me but for some reason coming here to Atlanta, my audience is um, like at my shows. They're so much bigger. They're are they? Yeah. Now you is it is it more recent now because you know you got more exposure through the show, or is it just the fact since you moved out there, it's just been a bigger audience? No, um, it before the show, um, uh, mainly before the show because, and and I don't know why, um. I did, I think I first noticed it when I did my first event, which was when I dropped Mood. Um, I did a listening party and it was kind of like over capacity and people got like sent away. I was like super, super sad. Um, but when I just pulled up like late as usual, <laughs> I saw like a line outside of the venue and I was like, what like I didn't understand it and then people were like hey Corday you know we talked on Instagram I'm like oh my god I feel horrible because it's like I know that we probably talk but I just don't I couldn't put faces and names it was right, very right, right. eye-opening and then um every event since then has really like I get a lot of love and um it's a lot of consistency and a lot of returning supporters so I really appreciate that so I know my co-host is not here, and I really wish he was, but, you know, he likes to get more deep into, you know, he always says I'm the professional one, and he likes to get more into your life, so I know he would like to know, um, a question he likes to know is, what do you do on your, your downtime when you're not Corday sings, and, and you're out here doing these major things? What does your downtime look like? I'm so, like, normal, like, <laughs> uh... I literally love to, hey, I really love to stay at home. I love watching Netflix. I love watching Hulu. I love watching Buffy the Vampire Slayer series. I watched it like over and over again. Um, and I love to eat. I love ice cream. I'm a big, I'm a big kid. Like I'm really a big kid. Um, yeah, that's what I love to do. I'm so just, that's what I like. I like to That's eat. dope. That's dope. You, you, you don't seem like a big kid. You seem very structured and really put together, which is not a bad yeah, thing, yeah. but it just seems like, you know, you it, it's dope that you can kind of come out of that and kind of zone down and be, you know, your true self sometimes out, yeah. outside of, because I know it's not a, a act, but it is a persona, you know what I'm saying? And yeah. you have to kind of turn it on and off sometimes yeah, when you're... Business-wise, um, I'm super, super structured. I know what I want. I'm my biggest fan. I am very strict on what I want. 
I take like complete control, whether it's the recording process, writing the songs, executive producing the songs, um, the marketing, editing the pictures, directing the photo shoot, retouching the photos, doing the right. album cover, like all of that is a big portion of me. Um, and so I have to have like my time to, I really want to, you know, live like a rock star, like when I'm not working, like that's my goal. Like I really want to be at the strip club. I want to be throwing ones and I want to do those things to live like a rock star. But, you know, right now I, I, I appreciate myself and, and spending time. Well, you look like one. I, I feel like, you know, I, I said since day one, I said you have to look, I feel like I know that, um, I really feel like your career is going to go somewhere because I feel like you have that it factor. And um, thank you. you. You kind of, you kind of put yourself at a, at a, don't take this the wrong way, but you kind of put your, it seems like you kind of put yourself at a higher standard than a lot of the other cast members when you go in there and that you look at yourself at a, you know, you like, you know, I am, Corday and I am this and that and I don't think nothing is wrong with that because I feel like you need to claim it if that's I've, what you want to do. I've done that since um, a while ago I, I auditioned for a show called X Factor and I got pretty far in the um, audition rounds of the competition and one of the executive producers of the show said you know you have a presence and I want you to continue living every day as if you're that you've already won 10 Grammys and all of those. Right. Things. Right. And so anytime that I'm, I call it artist mode, anytime I'm in artist mode, like I'm in artist mode. Like I don't, as you don't be. care what my accolades are or not, or whatever the case is, I'm always going to um, present myself as if I am the shit. Like I have to, um, because if you don't believe it and you don't, um, you don't give off those energies and that vibe, then everyone else is going to, you know, they're going to play with your time. They're not going to see it as well. I, I 110% agree with that. Um, another thing that I want to get into is your fashion. You're very fashion forward, I see, and I do like your sense of style. Uh, what, what are some inspirations of your fashion and how do you get your looks? Um, honestly, that portion of it is like a natural niche thing. Like, um, I love, I love, um, I love nature and the organic world and orgasms and I love sex and I love just hum humanity and all of those things tie into what I wear, whether it's, you know, the shiny cap mixed with the, you know, silky shine of a shirt like all of that stuff just it makes sense and it ties into that um so it's nothing that like i really sit and concentrate on like and take hours like this and this this and this this and this i walk in i don't like shopping um i don't i don't like shopping no really you would think otherwise you would think <laughs> otherwise because you are so fat like you know it doesn't look thrown together i'll tell you that yeah well the and and that's the beauty of art and that's the beauty of fashion as well is if you have a passion for it because i did go to school um for for fashion and when you have a passion for something as far as like especially fashion you you understand the science of it and you understand um fabrications and how they work together my one of my favorite things is like pattern mixing um risk to take and what works for you and what doesn't. Um, but I honestly, uh, career-wise, I do this every day. Like, I'm a personal shopper. Um, I brand okay. stores and those kind of things. So I'm around it all the time. And, and I appreciate um, luxury in, in clothes because it's an art. Um, so it kind of ties into some of the things that I've said in the past on the show and think how people respond to it. Um, people look at it as like, oh, my God, it's just clothes. How do you – how you – you know, trying to measure up who you are to fourteen hundred dollars worth of threads. Notice I said threads. I didn't say clothes or garments or what I said threads because I understand everything I had on in those moments were were handmade and it wasn't made by a machine. I understand the the beauty in it. So that if that's my if that's my thing, it's my thing. 
but I know that's not, right. And it's not intentional. Wrong. It's just, it's just who I am, like you said. Yeah. I mean, even if it is intentional, I mean, we all are out here, and I feel like there's people that, and I don't like to be like just because you're on the on the thing, because I'm gonna shoot your shit if it's wrong. You feel me? Right. But I'm a firm believer if you work hard for it, congratulate it, appreciate it, yell it from the rooftop because you know it's yours and you worked hard for it. So if you have fourteen hundred dollar worth of clothes on, you can scream it as much as you want because you worked hard to get fourteen hundred dollars worth of clothes on. Yeah, and and I think people get this idea of oh he has on fourteen hundred dollars worth of clothes and so he's just going out there spending money like that. He don't have a car. He don't. But the thing is. I might have on fourteen hundred dollars worth of clothes, but I run a store, so some of these things are given to me. They're wardrobe. Some of these things are things that I've earned because I sold the most in my company. Like they don't, you don't ever not, know why somebody is proud right. of what they have on. Though when I had on certain things like a pair of leather pants, I earned those things because either a I worked for. Or B, I, it's an accolade from my job directly to me. So, but you know, now that you're on the about sharing, now that you're on the forefront of TV, you know, of the internet and stuff, um, people are gonna criticize and comment on everything. You can, you can, you can free, you can feed every homeless child there is in America, and then they're gonna criticize why you ain't feed the parents. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, like, no matter what you do, it's gonna be something negative that they're yeah. gonna say. And 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 so, I and I get that. Um, I, not to this cal- caliber have I experienced um, <laughs> the the internet, um, but I've been doing this for some time. So and I've done it. Like I've I've done it. So, but I'm sure we'll get into that with with more. <laughs> right, right. So look, I, I I I want. I know everybody's waiting for, but you know. Um, the real tea and stuff like that. But I do want to know that um, before we get started is that I do appreciate what you are doing as uh, not only a gay black man, but uh, a man period that's out here and, you know, working for success and doing his own thing, being an entrepreneur, you know, is very inspiring despite the show and despite whatever drama that you may be going through in the show. But I mean, honestly, keep doing what you want to do, keep shining and, you know, um, keep being successful because you are, you're really doing a lot of things. And I really appreciate what you do as somebody. It's very inspirational for real, for real. <laughs> Especially coming out of North Carolina, you know, it's not too many of us coming out, you know, North Carolina, you feel me? So. <laughs> <laughs> um... Thank you, thank you. It, it it feels good to hear every time I hear it, and and for a long time I was always like surprised and like oh my god, people know me and all that it, for a long time. And it's it sounds different coming from everybody, and so I really really appreciate it because I have worked very very hard, and um, not everybody has and and. I agreed, and, and we're gonna get into it. And I hope you're opening up. And um, I'm enjoying this interview so far. Um, you're being very uh, open with me. I feel like you're comfortable. Are you comfortable? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm okay, always good. Uh, a little awkward, but I'm comfortable. No, that's fine. No, you're fine. You're fine. Look, so I want to. I want to let you know now that I'm. I want to ask. I'm gonna ask you my questions. We're gonna get into G status, but I'm gonna ask you questions as me researching and knowing the show and also as a cat as a fan of the show okay all right so i uh before we get into today's episode uh, i want to backtrack and you know they we introduce you in episode one and you're at this party at Siraj's party and you're you're in it and you're looking around and you're like, okay, this is an apartment. This is not what I thought it was and what's going on. So take me back to that moment. Take me back to what your really your, your thought process was walking in there and why was it such not a networking event? Um, so I had no problem with it being at a loft. Um, I had no problem with where it was, what it looked like. Um, those weren't my comments because <laughs> I had no, no problem with that. I, like you said, I'm from North Carolina. So 
anything where people can come together and commune about um, about business is is a great opportunity. Um, I was extremely late um, when I came. I had I was very late because I was locked out of my building because it was a fire at my building, so I didn't get there, you know, on time. And then it just seems like when I got there. Um, one, it really wasn't a lot of people there. Um, they have great camera play. It really wasn't a lot of people there. And the people that were there were not, um, they were kind of like extras, so to speak. I hate to say that because it makes them, like, not in the sense of like, oh, they held no value, but they were literally filling in the space. It wasn't like, they were there to to do this networking and people say well you didn't you not really talk whatever i go for vibes and i've been to a lot of networking events and when people mean business they mean business and when i came in that's not what was going on it was pretty much the first um cast meet it was the fir the first time the group got together and right. it was us um, meeting each other so immediately I snapped and realized that you know this is not really going to be a networking event this is you know our first meeting and sorry um, my first time filming um, so with that said um, not even five ten minutes into it the whole argument um, or scene or whatever you want to call it about Shirai doing um, porn or participating in porn like activity um, came up and for me it was just kind of like you know that's not that's not why I'm here and that's not that's not what we're doing like I kind of understand that I, I'm here and 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 people know me like they know like I mean business when I'm when I'm on set or when I'm when it's time to talk about music or when it's time to share your stuff. I'm I'm excited about that. I'm passionate about that. I'm not here to talk about, you know, what you did um in, on Tumblr. Like I honestly sorry. I I don't care. And so with him <laughs> doing up. that and then one guy having it on his phone and wanting to publicize it and Charlie approaching it, that's half of the event. So for me, it's like, okay, we don't have anything to network about. <laughs> and that, at which point people are like, well, why didn't he, why didn't he just leave? I, at, at which point I did leave. Um, after that happened, there was really not much of a scene left. Um, but, and also just to cl clear it, um, so I don't have to say it, you can't just leave set. Like, you can't just not show up to something. You can't just leave. That's why you see right, people. Right. It's a job at the end yeah, of the day. And that's why you see some people at the beginning of the season, mid-season. That's why you won't see them again, because you can't just leave. And, and anything that I invest my career into, I take it very, very seriously, which is why I'm the villain, because I take things probably way too serious. And so I'm not going to show up to mandatory group meetings. Can we rewind real quick? Because mm -hmm. this is this may be reason why I'm good at my job, but you said if I read into a lot of things. So right, you right. just said right now, because I've been I've been seeing I've been seeing rumors on the internet and in the little blog sites and stuff like that that um somebody quit. So what you just saying, that's why we don't see them because you can't just leave. Now, let's be real. So True Fine went to your event, saw it and left. Not true. Um, I'm going to go on record to say nobody quit. People may have been dismissed out of their contract, but nobody quit. Nobody would go through this and um, just quit um, and take a chance on something that's not major. I don't see that happening. Nobody quit. Mm, um, that's the, that is cheap. Um, because what, the word out is that he quit because the show wasn't doing nothing for him or something like that for his career. Um, no, no one quit. <laughs> there were people that were <laughs> that were dismissed. Now, I guess maybe one person may may or may have not quit. I think that there was a walkout um, of a group 
seen and, and I just think that people were just kind of like okay like you can be replaced and nobody really wanted to deal with it not that early um but I, I don't know the details in it but honestly from my perspective um being on a lot of sides of the process um I don't feel anyone quit I feel like people were dismissed out of their contracts um mm. as far as true true stayed at my event and had drinks um he was there for about an hour um it was a so it didn't because it looked like he just went in opened the door and saw it and then left no um true stayed at my event for about an hour um i was the the um feature performer and i had opening acts there were two feature performers me and another person and i had opening acts and they had opening acts he was tired of waiting and he told me, he was like, oh, I'm getting tired of waiting. And he actually like was like, I'm singing tonight. And I was like, really? And mind you, I didn't really know anybody like that. So I was like, oh, he might be singing. I was excited. And I was like, where's Trump? I think he's singing. And it was like, oh, we don't know where he is. So he left. But he was there for at least like an hour. He was there for an hour legit um, having a drink. And he, he agreed to that during um, on some post um, online. <laughs> so... Yeah, nobody came to my event and just felt like they were going to leave. Like, I made sure everybody was very well taken care of. Um, and it was nice so, to get up. <laughs> so everyone knows, okay, so everyone knows we got into a little scuffle. Well, not a scuffle, but a little argument with Milan, right? That, that, that will be your, I guess, your arch enemy of the season or whatever. Now... At, at Milan's event, at Milan's event, at the karaoke event, it seemed like you wasn't in tune or really wanted to be at that event, and you was kind of being shady. From what, as a viewer, and like I said, you know, I'm yeah. going to be asking you as a viewer, it came off that you were being very shady. I and bet being I saw nice. y'all's first little thing. No, just... <laughs> <laughs> um, go ahead. um, but, but, you know, Tell me, tell me where, where the shade originates from with Milan and why can't you get with who the person is? Actually, my first question, before you answer that, why do you feel like her is an act the way he acts? Did I say that? Yeah, you said that, you know, he is extra. He don't, it's not, you know, he Authentic. really doesn't. Um, I don't know how much of that I can share. Let's just say that my experience, as well as, um, shit, how can I put this without putting out too much? Um, pay attention, like really pay attention. Um, view him when he is, when he has on the wig and the extra clothes and who he is. And then go back and view him when he was talking to Zafar when there was no wig and it was just him. You, listen to the tone in the voice, listen to the pitch, listen to the way he talks and the way he expresses himself, his body, um, his posture and all of those things. I think without me sharing too much, if, if any viewer goes back and just looks at those two scenes, I think they will see two totally different people. I remember we did a radio interview um, after the show and they were in the room talking and, and it wasn't the, I wasn't even in the room, it was, a, it was a, uh, one of the owners of the radio station. And they got up and they went to the room once me and Shamel came out, they got up and they went to the room and they did their interview. And you can hear the interview from outside of course, because they're kind of like auditing and listening or whatever the case is. And the guy goes, the owner goes, that's a totally different person. That's not who he was when he was in here. That's so weird. And I looked at Tramiel and we just laughed. So. Mm, that is tea, weird. baby. I, 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 my I, I want you to know because, you know, Milan is a lot, is, is you can, um, I guess, say she's one of the fan favorites. Mm -hmm. And. He has a lot of great positive reviews as well as negative reviews, but I would say a lot more positive reviews and stuff like that because of his movement that he got going on with the androgyny. Um, but I, 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 I've 
even when we've interviewed him, I've interviewed him twice, and I feel like he's very authentic in who he is from what I see. And and mind you, when I say these things, I don't say I'm not saying he's not um, authentic in who he is. I'm just saying he's two different people. Mm. That doesn't that mean sense. I mean I'm two different people. Who I am behind closed doors in the privacy of my own home. Um, would text would would hit up Sherrod in his DMs asking this match, but me on the show present myself as an artist, I wouldn't, you know, I wouldn't ask him or, or try to talk to him in that manner. Um, I think we all have these alter and alternative personalities um, that may be day and night. And I'm not um, trying to take from his credibility in who he is when he has on the wig and, or when he doesn't because um, both people are beautiful. Um, I just think that right, there's... Right, right. I just think there's some identity um, conflict within himself. So I think that's where it comes in of, I don't know, you know, who you are. Um, I know it's very bland of an, of an explanation, but I do got, want you guys to be entertained and watch it out. So. No, I, I completely understand. So going into, um, the main, I guess, issue which led to this episode, which being the whole thing of um, Milan talking about Sherrod, um, that not being his apartment and whatever the case may be. You know, fast forwarding from episode three, where that, you know, conversation was discussed to episode seven, to where y'all discussing it now, to where it's openly being discussed. We're, we're, why? Let me let me ask you that. Why do you feel like it was necessary to bring that up? And what was your motive in bringing it up? Is it is it to sabotage Milan or is it to get everybody on your side? Like what was that moment? So originally with the argument, um, if you watch episode one, you see that he addresses it and Sherrod's not in the room. If you watch episode two. Um, or three, sorry, three, when he addresses it, Sherrod's not in the room. He's in a group of mixed company. He discusses that. He's in a group of people that he does not know because he did not know me, um, which he admitted. Um, and so my outlook on it was if you can discuss these things, something personal as where someone lives behind their back, in front of mixed company and strangers and all those things, then what would you do with people that you you know and you and you don't know? Like it for me, it was automatic red flag. And when you show me a sign of fakeness, I don't really want anything to do with you. So my energy automatically declined, and and, and I and I xed him out. Um, so when when the subject matter came up at the during this fast forward to this episode um at the dance situation um and he was just like i was just like well you should you know just make up with i and he was like well you should make up with milan i'm like but i don't really have an issue with with milan that can be and when i say i don't have an issue i was being passive um my issue i was really meaning i don't have an issue with him that i'm willing to resolve because when you show me right, who you right. are the first time, right. that's who you are, done. You're done I wash it. my hands with it. Um, especially something like that, because you don't know me. Um, and so when when he seemed like so like adamant about, you know, pro Milan, it was just kind of like, does he not know? <laughs> like, does he not understand? <laughs> so um, when that event came about, it's a couple of different things. Number one, I apologize to supporters and fans about how I acted at that um, pillow talk because um, I wasn't proud of it, um, of how I acted. Um, hold on, lights are going out. <laughs>
All right, I'm back. Um, I definitely wasn't <laughs> proud of how I um, reacted. Um, I'm, I don't, I'm not apologetic um, for what I said and in, in, in everything behind what I said. I'm more so, sometimes it could be your delivery that could be misconstrued. And I think that my- I, 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 would, I would agree with your delivery was off. Yeah. Um, but before we get before we get to the pillow talk, let's get to Sarah's event before that. Um, in Sarah's event, as a viewer, okay, so as as king of the show and as your fan, I'm like, okay, my bitch is not going to participate because he's going to show up, he's going to do his thing, bitch, be happy that I'm here. Like, you know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> So as your fan, that's what I'm thinking. Like, I'm like, you know what I mean? But I can't be biased and shit like this. You feel me? So I have to separate myself, you know what I mean? And be my second person, whatever. So I'm watching. I'm like, yes, bitch, leave him alone. Why are you mad? Why are you worried about what yeah. you're doing? Just let him I was it. there to be like, mo like moral support. Um, I'm right. It, 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 you I know, he, really not, he don't want to dance. So he probably got some performances coming up. He ain't trying to fuck up nothing. Maybe hurt himself or something. Like, I'm, I'm, I got you. You feel me? I got you, friend. You feel me? <laughs> but also, as a fan just watching the show, I was with like Safar and and Sherrod where it was like, well, why come if you were gonna because what it came what it came off like was it came off like, okay, it's Sherrod's event. Um I'm Corday and you got me out here doing this. Oh no. Let me go sit over here. Ugh. First off, she's my First off, she's my training, and she's about to teach you stuff that I taught her. So, <laughs> I like. <laughs> so, I'm like, what am I here for? So that's what it came. So I could understand where they came from. You feel me? But like I said, so what was that? Bring me back to that mindset and kind of elaborate on that, so that your fans and our viewers can understand what your mindset was. Um, my mindset in that moment was. I'm not dancing. Um, I don't want to dance, and that's not what I was doing. Um, I was asked and um, begged between um, production. Yeah, just said it right now. Um, production and Tramel to go. Um, I was really just going hoping that Charlie was going to be there, um, and honestly, just to have a good time with Tramel. Um, but once I got there, it was just like, oh, so this is a a female-based dance situation. And for me, I'm always looking out for my brand and I'm always looking out for myself and you're not gonna catch me pop this thing on. I'll put on this, okay, anyway. Um, I'm not gonna, um, hold on, let me, am I back? You're, you're fine, yeah. Okay, um, I'm so sorry, somebody tried to call. Um, but I'm not going to be caught popping my ass and dancing in stilettos and doing those things. And I knew the class was only an hour, and I'm not going to get to dance in an hour. So I let, let, let's get into let's get into. You say you're not going to be caught in stilettos. Now, do you wear stilettos? Do oh you yeah, no. Pop your ass? <laughs> Hung those up. I'm not just joking. Um, no, no. I mean, not that it's a problem, you no, know, no, for no. to each when, I, when, when I just, for me, I just at this point, we, you, we already are viewing the the cast versus being friends. It, it, at this point, it felt very everybody has motives and all that kind of thing. So at this point, it's like, okay, I'm here for business. Like the reason I got, I know you didn't ask me, but the reason I started doing the show in general was because of my love for reality TV, not love for love and hip hop and basketball wise. No, like making the band, like those kind of shows. Right, that's right, right, what I right. fell in love with reality TV. And that's what I thought I was walking into. So when you go into a situation and it's like, okay, we're going to learn how to do um, stiletto dancing and as popping it it's just it was like this is not beneficial to my career this is not going to help me grow as an artist and my mind was already made up but i said you know what i'm going to and we didn't know um prior to until we like was on our way it was like a stiletto class or whatever um um and, and a lot of scheduling stuff i really honestly had 
a lot going on and and I needed an assistant and I didn't pay attention. Honestly, like I didn't pay attention. Like half of the half of the events I really didn't know what I was walking into. I was just showing up and being a trooper. But with this in this in particular, like I said, there's really there's really no excuse. It was just a situation that I went to support a friend because they came to my show. Um, when I mentioned that I was going to be a spectator, my exact words were, I'm going to be a spectator and critique my critics. And I was hoping people would catch that and it would be powerful for them because had these young men not got on their interviews and um, gotten their confessionals and poorly critiqued my vocal ability, I would right. have never sat back and been a spectator critiquing my critics. So that would have never happened. But because you, because they decide to feel like they have to tarnish my brand because they can't come from me personally, um, because of how I carry myself and because they can't, you know, find bits and pieces on me, they, they, the, and they want to hurt me intentionally. They're going to so do something I that you're passionate about. Come for my career. So that's exactly why I said I'm going to critique my critics. Those, those confessionals were done a week um, ago. So it's, it's not like I don't already know what's going on out there. And most, most times I don't right. let, you know, interviews influence my confessionals. But at this point, it's like, so far, you, you're a stripper, um, but you can't bounce your ass, so useless. And Sherrod was a half second late on every move. And it's, it's just as credible as them saying Corday is pitchy or Corday's off his note. But what you cannot say is Corday didn't write his songs, Corday didn't market his own project, and Corday did not pay for his project. So we'll get into that later, though. Sorry. I know that's right. I'm not mad at it. Let me tell you something. Sidebar, though. Sidebar, because talking about interviews and stuff, I want to get into it because for a while, I wanted you on this show. Mm -hmm. For a while. I wanted you, actually, I wanted you on our, we have, you know, the Royal College is actually on Wednesdays, and this is the after show, so we're on Sundays usually. But I wanted you for a while, and you know, it was so hard to get, you know, to get you on the show. And Ja was like, I don't know, Corday's just not with interviews and he, he just don't want it, this, that, and the third. And I'm like, I hope because every every interview we've had other than Tremel, a lot of the cast members didn't care for you too much. Yeah. Um... So I'm like, I wonder if he's watching this show and he's like, oh, this is just a Bass Corday show. Because I try to iterate on every episode, this is not a Bass Corday show and that I am your fan. Like, you know what I'm saying? And that, you know, we're not going to do try to get too much in it, but I do want people to speak their truth. So I want you to comment on that. And if you have watched our interviews, how do you feel about that and what some of the stuff that have said? Um, as far as like... Um coming to do the interview, I wasn't doing any interviews. Um, I didn't do, I was asked to do interviews that I've like begged Tremel to do for me and he's been a trooper and done them. Um, I've been asked to do interviews multiple times by a lot of different people, but I was just, I, I'm an observer and I wanted to sit back and observe and I wanted to watch and see how disgusting these people act. Um, it, it, and, I, and I can't wait till you have me on later so we can actually talk about that. But I feel, like I said, it, I wanted to sit back and watch it. When I, got, when I started doing interviews, I wanted to be able to address everybody at once because I'm not going to do bitter tit for tats. Um, where if, if I'm going to address you, I can, I can make a common conclusion with all of you and we can just let that be what it is. Right. Well, I respect you for, for coming on the, uh, the show now and addressing a lot of things. Um, I know that, um, this was just part one of the, the T whatever, and 
it just gets worse. You know, I do. I, you know, being being being, you know, working with you guys and working alongside with you guys, you know, I do get a little inside on things and stuff like that. So I do know that the next episode, everybody needs to tune into because it's going to be really good. But um, I don't want to get too much into that because I know that there's stuff that has to be talked about later. So I do want to invite you on our show on Wednesdays, yeah. you know, at a future time so that you can also clear up some things on, you know what I mean, on that as well, just because yeah. we have some more cast members to have on this show before we can repeat anybody. But um, I would love to have you on that show. But um, going back to this show, you know, we leave Sherrod's event and you're outside and y'all talking. Now, the whole event, I, I just feel like, I just feel like when you were kind of explaining the situation of what was going on, I feel like it was just there to be tea and everybody was around just to get the tea from you. Now, was your expectation to spill all of this at the pillow talk? Because I do know that that's when, uh, you know, the far was like, you know, I'm having my event and all of that. So was that like, okay, this is my Dude, perfect time. You're to too smart team. of an interviewer. Um, <laughs> I love Trebell, but honestly, I forgot about it. <laughs> um, not knowing people, not knowing anyone in the group and not really, really being well-versed on who anyone is, I don't really have that much care for you, with the exception of Tramiel. Um and, and slightly Charlie at the moment. And what, what it was, was I had already made up my mind. Like, it, it doesn't take me much to, to figure out who someone is. And my thing is, people are like, well, you just didn't give them it. Why do I have to invest myself into someone who is divesting all of this crap? Like it's 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 not. I've never heard any of them on set at any point say, you know, I have this acting gig going up. Oh, you know, I have this, you know, acting class. Going. Like I've never heard any of those things. So I obviously know what your intentions are. So in that moment, I was just I was a little bit more checked out, and I was just you know trying to have a conversation and commune with the guys and just kind of watch and see how they interacted with me um but i had no intentions of really bringing it up until me and tramel left and tramel because tramel hinted at it um in the scene he said obviously you know people had some things to say about you and sharad being sharad um not being very very a hundred percent was just like oh well they will never say it to my face you're right they will because they didn't, not even at the event. So my thing is, I didn't, I didn't respond to it because if you want to sit around and be, you know, it, um, um, naive about it, then you know that's your prerogative. So when we got in the car, Tramel was like, "I thought you were gonna bring up the fact that you know, so and so said, you know, he was not, you know." he didn't have a home and he didn't bring it up being messy like you should bring it up he brought it up because the whole reason that me and milan did not click and never got a chance to get to know each other was because i checked him on that subject right the subject matter was sharad the subject matter was literally me trying to laugh over and smooth over his situation and and bring it back to you know just a, a regular group situation but it, he made it a topic of discussion. And they had just finished telling us that this boy was in the hospital. And that's why he wasn't on set. And the only thing you have to talk about is, you know, that wasn't his home. And it's kind of like, okay, you saying that's not his home. So now what you have done is, wait, we're not on that scene yet. But yeah. Okay. <laughs> You was about to spill some tea, huh? I mean, it all ties into each other. For anything I do, in any any way that I act, it's just not because I'm a bitch and I'm just like I'm here to be evil. Like, no, it's I I get seen time. Now, I now I I know with editing they cut certain things out, they put certain things in. I do know that you know because I'm a big fan of reality TV as well. But at the pillow talk, it did seem like. Now, you Pillow Talk's a different started. story. Pillow Talk's a different story. 
Okay, Philip talks is a different story because you went in there because you're like, you know, I didn't cut you off, Sherrod, but you did. <laughs> so with the pillow talk, um, are we, you want to move to the pillow talk? <laughs> okay. Yes, let's I didn't move know to the pillow talk. Let's move to the pillow talk. But we got, look, I don't want John to kill me, so we got to be really careful how no, we no, no. how we address it because it's no. not the full no no it's no. not fully aired no 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 I, I i got you i wouldn't um yeah um so as far as the polo talk again i was three hours late <laughs> me and Tramel both and this is why there was a networking event a real networking event um in Buckhead <laughs> Shops. Really okay. Good. In Buckhead Shops. And it was musicians, DJs. They had like an open bar, free drinks, a feature drink that was brown. And like we were getting our eye like they had groomers there, male groomers. So we were getting lineups and, and this was all at like eleven, twelve o'clock at night, right? In the well, twelve o'clock in the morning, eleven o'clock at night. So I don't know what happened. He has froze. I don't know if we got another call. Corday. Lord. <laughs> Let's see if we can get Corday back. Back because Lord, is this getting good? Cordage is not going through. Cordage not going through. Let me see. Is, try to exit out and come back in with your phone landscape and see if we can get that back in going. Guys, so this uh interview with Tramel, I mean with uh Corday is amazing. If you got any questions, please feel free to ask them. I'll be going through my comments to go ask them any questions you guys may have for the season that I may have not touched on uh, that you may want to know. So if you do have any questions for Corday, please, this is the time to ask them. Um, let me know what's going on, what you want to know from Corday. Yes, here he is. I'm going to get him back. Here going. I'm We're so back. sorry. I put it on do not disturb. Hopefully that like will stop people. No, you're fine. You're fine. So go ahead. Um, go ahead with your you saying your story. Um. So basically, we went to this event and we got like pretty tipsy. Um. And he was like, "Okay, now we got to go to Stone Mountain." And I'm like, "Oh, I really don't go." But then this text went out of, "If you did not come, you were being fired." Um. <laughs> So we we travel all the way out to Stone Mountain and we get there and like when they were like, oh, it's a pillow talk, I'm under the impression that we're going to be in like this sweet, you know, type situation. Um, but we're in this little room and I'm like, it's, it was hot and I just didn't understand why you're hosting an event and then host it in your room. I mean... Why not host it in your living room? Because that's where the pole was. You can move that pole. And nobody, I mean, you didn't really need the pole. I'm sure you pulled out for the week. Um, but no, honestly, it was just, it was just a situation where it's just I like, I, I, I left this awesome event at Buckhead Shops doing something that I really wanted to do to come and sit on the floor in your room. So I again I didn't really say much. Um I this is what I do remember. Um there was Hennessy there and I took, you know, a glass, had me a glass, and I was falling asleep. And I was falling asleep. And the producer and Intramel was like, Wake up, wake up, wake up. So I was tipsy, 
they was waking me up out of my sleep and they were doing a whole bunch of fake shit on the other side of the room of like this, oh, this we're buddy, buddy, buddy. And I'm like, okay, time out. Y'all are buddy and buddy, but he was just talking about you at the last event. Any event before that, I don't, I don't get this. Like, did y'all make up? And if y'all did, it's okay. But y'all need to publicly make up because y'all publicly, you know, he publicly put your business out there. So you need to bring some clarity to the group. I don't understand. And I think that's what the producers were waiting on because I'm like, okay, we're we're not really doing anything and the producers are just kind of waiting. They're, they're kind of bored and I'm ready to go home. I have worked all day. That's well, I, 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 I did, I did when, when Sherrod was like, oh, this is the time we're going to go around the room and say what we do. I already knew that's where the tea was going to spill right there. Because yeah, I, know because you was I can hear them on the too. other side of the room um, kind of commenting on my career. That was a lot of topic of discussion was my career. And it was just like, I don't get it. I, do, I don't get it. Like, I don't even, and if you watch the show, which you do, if you watch all the way up until um, episode maybe four or five, I don't talk about anyone. I don't say anything no, about anyone. I don't say anything about anything. I might comment on events. I might comment on... Except the, Milan. Except Milan. That's why I said up into episode four or five or okay. somewhere in there. Um, and the reason is because I don't... That's not, that's not who I am. Like, I don't come for your character. I'm not coming for your careers. I could, but I'm not. Uh, when I addressed Milan about what he had on, it was surface level. I'm addressing what you have on. And the only reason I addressed your coat was because you say you were going to take take it off and, and, and punch me. So I want to bring the subject matter back to your coat so you can remember that for the rest of your time on the show. <laughs> I can't with you, Corday. I said, you know, okay. your, petty, your petty is not... Your petty is not the right there, I'm going to stab you. Your petty is I hugged you, dropped a bomb in your pocket, and when you walk away, it's going to tick, 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 and then boom, it's going to hit you like, damn, this motherfucker really done did all of that. Whatever. Like, that that's your petty. I, I use, I don't, I don't do anything to people. I let people do it to themselves. I let, I'm going to let you sabotage yourself. And when you sabotage yourself, I'm going to, I'm going to tell you, yo, do you realize that you just fucked up? Like, that's. So tell me. So tell me, from filming and then rewatching, what is your what do you think about that? Are you happy with who you portray yourself to be? Uh, because I know it's a different aspect watching yourself back instead of filming because you don't know what you're. I mean, you know, but you don't really know exactly how you look and what you're doing and saying until you actually re rewatch it. So, what is your your feedback? Contrary popular belief, <laughs> um, me and production we get into it normally for the past few confessionals we've gotten into it and I have also been very upset I've walked out and had to take a few minutes because I do feel like I don't mind being twisted into the villain because if you look at any script writing reality show documentary docuseries there has to be a villain there has to be a hero. There has to be supporters. Like, I don't mind taking on the role, but I don't like it at the expense of my career, um, at the expense of my passion and my brand. Um, if it's going to be about Do you feel like it's affecting your career? Um, I don't know, because since the show's released, I've been working on a lot of other things that will be out soon um but i do have a new project coming out and i guess we'll find out but i think that it'll i, I don't i think that my fans um and they and it's apparent it's a, it's been apparent in a lot of situations that they support me and um i just wanted to walk into a situation where i would gain more um instead of having the ones that I just have to fight for me if that makes sense no, it does. It makes perfect sense. Um, so, 
as, as far as the whole show in all, are you excited? Are you happy that you did this? Are you happy that you're a part of this? Is it, you feel like, is it helping your brand any? I think that the idea of the show is genius. I think that in the climate that we're in, it, it, it's a beautiful thing. I think that the workmanship that goes behind it <clears throat> is awesome. I just think that the cast um, could have been better. Um, yeah, I just think that the cast could have been better. In what aspect does, can the cast have been better as far uh -oh. as their entrepreneurship um to be honest and just to put it out there very bluntly i am the only only person that produces anything on the show i've produced scenes on the show i've produced i've been a part of producing other people's scenes on the show i have any event that you've been that you see of mine whether it's the studio whether it's um whether it was my event, I've paid for those times. Everybody else has been paid. Not paid as they've gotten the money, but um, for example, Fashion Week. The only reason these um, kids walked in Fashion Week was because the designer was the producer, the executive producer of the show. You would have never had that opportunity had the, he not invited you to do it and that's not to knock you down but it's kind of like I have to redirect you kid like you you want to talk about my events and you can talk about my vocals all day like regardless it's, it's undeniable it's, it's it, this is where I am and, and I've been <laughs> placed in and I've paid for my shit you see? I've invested thousands of dollars into my career y'all sit around and wait for the producer to call you up and say, well, you know, I pay for this location for you. Do you want to shoot this? Will you come and do fashion week so we can get footage of it? You think that we can, like that, that you wait, you, that's, that's what you do. So all of your stuff is constructed and I, I, I've earned my shit and I paid for it. There's not one scene that is Corday, um, that Corday did not produce. This down to the scene where me and Tramel go talk at Prince Italia. I set up for us to, to shoot there. It's, it's, it. Well, you know what? Like it, it, is this is your time. I act the way I do on the show because I know I know what's going on. And, and when you see somebody doing the work and working hard at it, you know, maybe A, cut me a little slack. B, don't fuck with me. And then C, you know, try to put in some work. But I've, I've just noticed that, you know, people enjoy glorifying, you know, um, the media trash. <laughs> Look, I, this is why I wanted you out here so bad, because I, I, I wanted you to be able to spill, you know, and, and give everyone your truth. You feel me? And, and, and the actuality of what is happening because we only get one aspect of you. You know what I'm saying? When we watch right. this show, we get a couple minutes of a scene and we like to place our judgment on, you know, as if we know who you are completely. You know what I'm saying? So I'm glad that we get, you know, these cast members on the show because it, it lets people get into who you are and your mindset on things to make people relate with you more, if that makes right. any sense. So, you know, um, sometimes... You know, even with the the villain aspect of of who your character is, I don't really mind that for you because, like you said, there has to be a villain in every in everything. But with with the villain, I feel like the villain is always somebody that speaks the truth and mm -hmm. or calls out people in their thing. Like, let's you know, just for example, because she's in the top of my mind, Kenya Moore of you know Housewife. You know, she's the villain because she's the one that's gonna. Oh wait. But didn't you say that this and this and this and this? And you know what I mean? And people find it messy, but other people will find it, well, I don't I'm not being fake and you told me you ain't like the bitch. So why are we hanging with the bitch if we don't like the bitch? Type and of thing. The, and see, my thing about that is I only only put my five cents in situations that I have to be a part of. So when it came to the Milan and Sherrod thing, it's like you guys keep trying to pin me with him and do these talks and stuff, but I'm not doing this because I've seen what his behaviors and his characteristics are. What's your proof that he's like this? Well, my proof that he's like this is behind your back, he said X, Y, and Z. 
So they can get caught up on the whole, oh, I never said he was homeless. Okay. You didn't say he's homeless. But nobody yeah. would have known that that wasn't his home had you not brought it up. You didn't only bring it up in mixed company. You brought it up on camera. And now the blogs are blogging that he's homeless. So that that narrative and those things would never be out there because when you do that you give people the opportunity to interpret i can say that you said that he's homeless because if he was there to say i'm not homeless i don't live there it would have been a different story but he was not there to correct you so i'm gonna take your word because like you like he said in his scene i care for milan I, I'm but let, milan. Let, let, let's be let's be Let's be a hundred because I don't want to, because I do, I am team Corday. I am, to be honest, I like everybody for their own aspects because I love Milan as well. And, and Sherrod, you know, I have a soft spot for Sherrod as well. So I love everybody in their own way, but I, it was messy the way it came about. Oh, yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's why, again, that's uh, I've said since yesterday. To and the and it seemed like it seemed like your problem with Milan spilled over and it went from it being me telling my friend or me telling someone to watch out for somebody. It, it sounded it kind of came off as like a vindictive type of thing, like, oh, I, I don't like this bitch. So let me try to stir some shit up with them. That's what it came off as. Um, I think that if if we watch if we watch the footage at one point I'm like you know I don't have anything Milan Milan has nothing for me and she agreed then Sherrod spoke again and it's like okay stop talking to me because I'm drunk and I'm sleepy and you it what is what's about to come out you're you're not ready for it. and I don't think he was ready for it and I think the easiest way out for him was oh, let me side over here and just, you know, play whatever role they give me, which he does. So I have a question right now. This has been going on all season. Um, Mm -hmm. This DM monster thing that everybody's talking about, let's get into it, right? The viewers Mm want to know, what what is everyone talking about? Because Charlie said it, you know, um, uh, Sherrod said it. Are you somebody that's in their DMs and is it excessive like they making it out to be? Oh, definitely. Definitely? So with Charlie, um, I met Charlie some years ago and he hit me up on Jacked. Um, And when he hit me up, I was like, wow, he's a beautiful guy. I'm not really into like hooking up right now. I kind of want to get to know him type situation. So I found him on Instagram to set a different tone. Um, And that's when I hit him up. I have receipts. Um, So that's when I hit him up. And so I've I've been back and forth with Charlie for about two years, I want to say. With Sherrod, I hit Sherrod up before um, well, I'm not going to even bring that into the, the the discussion, I guess. But I hit Sherrod up um, last, ooh, has it been two years now? No, it's been a year. I hit him up at the beginning of last, the end of last year um, before filming, um, probably a month or two before filming. And I didn't DM him. I commented on a story pic. So it goes into your DM. So if that's what he he wants to label as a DM, okay, so be it. I have no problem owning that. Um, I hit him on that, and I just sent emojis to the picture that he posted of him tooting it up. Um, And he responded, and from there, we just went back and forth a little bit. And then I ended up seeing him on Tumblr, and I had to do, like, a double take. And I was like... This Tumblr thing is coming up. (laughs) I was like, oh, well, I can't really fuck with him because he's on Tumblr, um, busting it open. Um, so you are, so so you would say you are attracted to Sherrod? I had never met him um, in person at this point. I don't think. Hmm. 
He takes good pictures. He should he should take um what he does very seriously. Exact model. Because he takes good pictures. I, well, I told you I, I read into things a lot. Uh, I promise you I do, I had, but we're going to bypass that. I had met him in person, and I didn't, honestly, I just didn't think he was as thin as he is. Um, and we, and I'm a big judge of, like, I need to, you have to look good in clothes for me to really want you out of clothes. So my exact words to him was, you know, you have the tumbler shit up. I'll just be a fan. And I left it there. Um, from there, I was just, you know, cordial. And, um, yeah. Did you see, did you watch Shiraz porn? I don't like porn. You don't like porn. Is there, is there a reason why? Um, I don't like anything that's really not for me. Like, I, I, I like a guy that will send me a video that he made for me. If I feel like it's for somebody else, even if it may have been for somebody else with the guy who might send it to me, if it feels like it's for me, then I can, you know, get into it. Um, but I like people in the physical sense. I've never really, I don't think I've liked porn since mm, I was in my, like, maybe 20, 21. Um, yeah, it's just not my thing. But guys send me stuff all the time, and that's that's awesome. Love it. <laughs> and that's awesome. <laughs> I can't with yeah. you. Um, I just don't. I just don't want to see it shared. When it once it's shared with the world, then it's kind of like, Ugh, I'm turned off. It's not for me. I'm a no, kid. I, I, like, I like feeling who I am. Are you, you know talking about not sharing? Um, are you in? What is your dating life looking like? Um, I am now constructing my life to accommodate someone that I find special. Um, I've been a bachelor for about three years. And before that, I had like a, my first love and a really, really horrible breakup. So um, right now, I'm just constructing my life to be the best man for someone else because I I can still be in my bachelor ways. And now, is, is, is there someone else that already has that potential yeah, spot yeah, is yeah. why you're you're making this this change yeah yeah i think definitely there's someone that i do find special and um i am willing to to make this change and see what happens but um it seems like oh you know you haven't said the name so i'm not going to press you for the name but can you let us know is he in the industry or is he you know just a normal nine to five guy Oh, whoa. nine to five guy. Um, yeah, he's a, he's he's just like me. We we work hard. Um, we're nine to five, and we're six to three in the morning. Oh, I hear that. I ain't mad at it. I ain't mad at it. And I I, I wish you all nothing but success and love and all that good stuff with that. Um, so let let's get into let's get into what the uh, what the kids you know I've asked questions throughout the week on uh, people you know giving me questions on for you um, some of the personal questions usually Key does this kind of side but um, <laughs> he's not here so I got to do this so because um, he's more a little bit more open than I am but um, you're you're you you know the kids want to know I know your DM is flooded. I know, I mean, you're a very attractive man, right? Um, <laughs> you're a very attractive man, and I know everybody's hawking you. So what is, you know, for that potential somebody coming in, what what do they have to, is, is, are you attracted to bottoms? Are you attracted to tops? Are you attracted to femmes? Like, name me your, 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 your ideal man. Um, I am a full top. I don't like. Penises, <laughs> um, just not my thing. Um, I like, um, I like someone who works um, as hard as I do or harder, because it's easier for them to understand what I have to go through and what I do. Physically, you can't be skinny like me. I don't like skinny guys. Um, you got to be a little bit. You got to have a little bit of something. Um, I don't know. I like very. I like dainty guys. 
I'd say. Um, not necessarily feminine, but um, I always run into getting situations with masculine guys, but I'm not really into masculine guys. I like more of the feminine guy. Um, but masculine guys always like me, and that usually happens. Um, and they're usually cooler to be with, but I like more of the feminine guys. But, I mean, that's really it. Everything else is just subject to who you are. Um, who you are, yeah. As in, you know, a nice, I love stomachs, so I like flat, pretty stomachs. I like those kind of things, but um, I don't have a specific type. Um, I love chocolate people. Like, I like people with some seasoning to them, some culture, you know. Mm. I like me some chocolate. I'm in a relationship now, um, and we, 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 we. I, I really, I'm really more Team Corday now than anything because I relate with you a lot. You know, I'm full top, and you know, I like dark skinned men, and you know, um, I like, I don't like feminine guys, but I like dainty guys. Like, you know, my my, I'm in a relationship now, and my man is, I would call him a masculine bottom, but he's also, he's also, he's in tune with his feminine ways as well. You know what I mean? Which I love, whatever the case may be. Um, but I'm really Team Corday. Like, I, I really respect your mindset on things. And I'm glad you kind of gave us an insight on in depth of what, you know, you were thinking about these moments. Because I really feel like a lot of what you say and go through is what a lot of people think, but just won't say it out loud. So they're just like, oh, my God, I can't believe he said that. But at, at, at most of the time, you know, we I, and I talked to my, you know, Key uh, about this and my friends. Like, you know, I was like, a lot of the things that Corday says, we say when we go out. When I go out, I always tell people, you know, I always say, look, we ain't go. People can't sit with us. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, like, you just can't. You can't just do anything, go anywhere. Right. Just, just do it. Like it's like you have to have some type of value in the, in in the moment that you carry yourself and surround yourself with the people um, that that hold themselves to that standard, then you know that that's when you know who you are, when people want to be around you. Um, I mean, and I have those people in my life. And when that didn't happen with certain people, then I kind of knew you. this is how you get down and this is what you do. And it was, it's unfortunate because I do give everyone, I do give everyone a uh, um, honest chance. And, I, and I'm open to seeing people grow and be better um, but 